Hey guys, it's Mark and Tanya, and welcome back to the channel. And today we have completed our installing the 30 amp shore power inlet so that we can have three sources of power. One being the solar panels, two is the alternator, and three, this guy, the shore power. So come join us as we show you what you need and how we installed it. Okay, so what do you need to do this project? So first, you're gonna need this 30 amp shore inlet. The reason we chose to go with 30 amps is because this is what you commonly use at RV parks. So um, this will allow us to connect directly. We'll have a 30 amp extension cord and we'll connect directly to the power they give us. If we happen to be at some place that only gives you 15 volt, 15 amp, or 20 amp like in the house, we've got this dog bone adapter that goes from 30 amp to 15 amp and then this locks in place so it's nice and tight and then that'll give us 15 amps wherever we are so even if you're parked in somebody's driveway and they're nice enough to run a extension cord out from in their house you can plug into it and run the van on that wire so this is 10 3 stranded wire 10 gauge and three connectors ground neutral and hot this is marine it's not marine grade but it is uh outdoor stranded wire so you can get this in um where it's just one solid connector here but because of the vibrations of the van it's really better to get the stranded stuff so don't get romex or any of that stuff you want the stranded uh marine grade stuff so that it's cor it's corrosion resistant and works well with the vibrations you need something to strip that with so we've got these tools you're going to have to cut a hole in the van so protect your eyes and to cut the hole in the van you'll need a hole saw and then standard stuff you'll need a file and then some rust-oleum and a brush or some q-tips to clean out the hole and make sure nothing rusts we've got our little handy dandy magnet thing that helps us pick up any metal filings that we can't reach we've got some tape and some plastic bags to make the area nice and clean for us stainless steel bolts and a screwdriver to hold it in when it's done and the only thing left is butyl tape for some reason we got a bunch of beetle tape left over i don't really know why so we must have forgot it somewhere else but we got it and we're gonna wrap it around probably around this thing and stick it in the hole and that'll give us a little extra water resistance and that's it let's get to it so we're going to put our shore power adapter pretty much right around there if you see there's this huge kind of indented piece in the skin of the van and there's not enough room here in the back to install it so really the only spot we've got is here and the kitchen starts about right here so we figure this is a good spot it misses this trim and it's pretty flat so we know we can get a good water seal so that's the spot we're intending to put it in now we've got to go inside and find it so the next morning I was sitting around drinking coffee and watching educational television when suddenly I had an moment okay so maybe it was a little bit dramatic but we really did have an oh crap moment this thing being here is fine it clears the door and everything the problem is as soon as you open this up and stick a wire in it going to smash it with the door so looking back probably not the best place to put it um, in, on the other side would have been much better in the back would have been better uh, so what we'll probably do is put I, I went through all these scenarios right do I do I have this taken out and go to a body shop and have them fix it but you can actually install something up here that stops the door um, keeps it from sliding all the way so that when you're on a hill the door doesn't always slam open so you can actually put a little wedge right here so we're gonna get one of those um, and we'll just have to know that when we're plugged into shore power uh, don't force the door open <laughs> open fast it but you know when you watch these YouTube videos everything seems to go perfect and you think nobody ever makes mistakes and I'm here to tell you we make lots of them maybe not this big but we make them but the rest of the video is good so keep watching so that spot on the outside probably maps to, we figure right around here. So we're gonna pull out some of this 
insulation because once this stuff gets metal all in it, it is a nightmare to deal with so we're going to put that aside and we're going to drill a pilot hole from the inside right around here um, and then we'll from the pilot hole we'll go on the outside and actually drill the rest of it so that would give us the power adapter here power inlet here wires come right here and this is where all our the electronic magic happens so first thing is to drill a pilot hole right through there all right so the van is all prepped we've got tape on the inside and the outside we drilled our pilot hole now we're going to use a two and an eighth inch hole saw to cut the hole for the adapter So we don't have a dog, but a lot of our neighbors do, and they come right here a lot of times. So we want to get rid of all the iron filings, all these little metal shavings are all over the place. So before we do anything else, we're going to vacuum everything and clean it before we move any further. If you've watched our other, our past video, ah, if you've been watching our videos, you know it's always the same. Anytime we cut into the van, we always clean up the shards of metal and then we use a file to kind of smooth out the rough edges and then apply Rust-Oleum for rust. Okay, now we're gonna let this dry and we'll come back in about 20 or 30 minutes. So while we're waiting for the paint to dry, I've gone ahead and I've cut back the jacket of my wire and I use my wire strippers to cut back the insulation on these three conductors and now I'm going to feed them into the inlet adapter. So the way this thing works is it's got some screws. You basically feed the wire through here, tighten the screws and it clamps down on the wires and makes a really tight connection. So we're just going to follow the pattern. We've got green, white and red. So we'll start with the green which is the ground. Um, the black and of course it does not matter what order you do these in and you're going to want to do this now before you install it in the van because once you've got it installed it's pretty hard to work with And those are going nowhere. So we want to just make sure that this is wired correctly in here. So I've gone ahead and I stripped the other end of all these. And then I'm basically going to use an, uh, a meter to tell me if these wires are connected properly. Because I want to make sure that I haven't pushed the, the uh, jacket in too far. And now it's crimped down on the jacket as opposed to the wire. So I want to make sure there's a good connection between these wires and these prongs right here. So... I've got this meter set up that if there's no resistance, it basically gives me this gosh awful sound. So now I'm going to go one by one and I'm going to pick the green side first. And you notice we've got a good connection. If I touch it to the other two, we don't hear anything. So we know green is connected properly. We're going to go to the white side. That one's good. Black side. Ah, there we go. So we know that all three of these are connected properly. They're making the good connection to the other end of the wire. And now we can go install it in the van. Last thing we're going to do is, even though this has a gasket around it, we want to just make sure it's as watertight as possible so we've got all this leftover butyl tape like i said i don't remember where we're supposed to use it but we probably messed up somewhere else because we have it but i'm going to use it anyway i think this came with the fan so we're going to wrap it around here all right 
So we're going to fit this back in. Yeah, there is no water getting in there. Okay, so we fit the adapter into the hole. It's great. The wires are connected to it. Now all we've got to do is make sure it's sitting where we want it. We hold it up with a little bit of tape. And then we are going to go ahead and drill some pilot holes. This bit is the same exact size of the bolts we have. I don't remember what the size is, but whatever size you buy, what I would do is I would test, I would drill a test hole in a piece of wood, make sure the bolts fit nice and tight before you go ahead and do it here. But we know it's going to work, so we're just going to drill straight through. I'm using a, I'm using a Q-tip to get a little bit of Rust-Oleum in the hole from the back side. Because if I do it from the front, it's going to make a heck of a mess on that nice white inlet. You notice our butyl tape seems to be doing its job. So now we're going to come out, go outside, and install the nuts from the outside. So last piece, we have stainless steel bolts, two washers, and a nut um, as a set. So we're going to put one, knot, one uh, washer on the outside of the van, and then the other washer and the nut will go on the inside. So on the outside, we've got this. And these are stainless steel so they don't rust. The next thing we'll do is we'll go inside, we'll add the washer and the nut to the inside, tighten it up, and we should be done. So the last thing you gotta do is put this back housing back on. Don't forget to do that. So basically, you slide the slide it up the wire and you um, attach it at the end. And then we use these clamp connectors. I think this is a 3 8 clamp connector. You can get them at Home Depot or any electrical store. Basically, you'll, basically you'll pull the nut out. This will fit right through that back hole. You lock it in and then you can use here, you can use these two screws to loosen this clamp and it clamps that wire in place. So that's really what holds the bracket in place or the, uh, the back housing in place. So screws don't seem to do much. So I'm probably going to pull the screws and get some bigger washers so that the washers actually sit on top of the housing and hold it down in place. But I think it's all good. So one thing I did want to make clear in this video is I am not a licensed electrician. Tanya is not a licensed electrician. I do have a master's degree in electrical engineering, but that just means I know how to write a bunch of really complex formulas on how this works. And I actually that didn't actually teach me this. Um, I did have a very old world Italian father. He passed away just a couple months ago. But since I was 10 years old, we had these properties in New Jersey and he got tired of doing stuff. So, hey, Mark, go, go change the light switch. I didn't know how to do it. He didn't tell me how to do it. He didn't tell me what not to touch. And you get shocked here and there. And you're like, all right, don't touch that. And stop doing this. And isn't there somewhere I can turn off electricity? And so you sort of figure things out. So over the next 20 years, I kind of figured out how to do all this to stuff. But I really owe all of it to him for forcing me to do it in the first place. But my point is, if you're not comfortable, hire an electrician. Um, the steps of this are pretty easy, but... This is pretty fat wire. This can carry a lot of electricity. If it's not done right, you certainly could run into problems. So um, do it smart and hire the person you need to and it'll go great. Here we are, me and my slightly misplaced 30 amp shore power inlet, but it looks good. It's just, <laughs> we just gotta make sure we don't break it off with the door. So anyway, we are heading out. Tanya's already inside getting ready. We're heading to Death Valley for a couple days before I've got a Vegas a conference to go to in Vegas. Vegas, baby! So uh, we will be back probably next weekend and get working on this. Uh, again, got a little more electrical work to do. So we are excited, and we will see you later. Thanks for joining. Bye.